So today we are going to discuss the cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle is basically the events which starts from the beginning of heart contraction till the end of uh, or the heartbeat and till the end of heartbeat and then the start of another beat. So basically heart cardiac cycle is the events that begins with the contraction of the heart or the heartbeat the beginning of the heartbeat and till the end of the heartbeat and then the beginning of another so here we in this diagram we are showing two beats together it one starts here and ends here and then another starts here in the with the p wave and ends here in the cardiac cycle we have different uh, events or different types of phenomenon which we have discussed separately in the last few lectures we discussed the aortic pressure curve we discussed the ventricular pressure curve we discussed the atrial pressure curve we discussed the ventricular volume curve we discussed the electrocardiogram ecg so, and we also talked about uh, phonocardiogram or the heart sounds so Today we are going to summarize all those curves, all those phenomena in a single lecture and we will just briefly discuss each of them. So to start, we first of all we will uh, consider the electrocardiogram or the ECG. So the basically the heart beat starts with the excitation of the heart with the help of SA node, sinoatrial node somewhere here. Around the, around the opening of the superior vena cava into the right atrium. The heart cycle consists of a systole or contraction and a diastole or relaxation. The systole basically begins with the excitation of the heart from the SA node, sinoatrial node. This sinoatrial node sends a spark to the atria, the initial, the primer uh, pumps which contract the right atrium, the left atrium, they contract and they pump the blood into the right and left ventricles. Then the right and left ventricle contract or, or during systole and they pump the blood into the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So the beginning of the electric process or the activity or the contraction process from the SA node is with the, with the P wave. So the initial excitation of the initial excitation of the atria, both the atria, when it occurs, this excitation or this electrical activity is picked from the human body, and it is it uh, it appears on the electrocardiogram, which is a paper recording or machine recording of the electrical activity. It appears is a P wave. The P wave is followed. The P wave is uh, after a few seconds. It is followed a few, not a few seconds, just a small interval of a second. It is followed by the contraction of atria. After the P wave, the P wave is basically excitation of the atria. When the atria gets excited, the atria contract. So when the atria contract, this portion between the P wave and the QRS complex. This is basically the contraction of the atrial process. After the contraction of the atria, the, the electrical activity it spreads to the ventricle. It causes depolarization of the ventricle or the electrical activity of the ventricle. This electrical activity or this depolarization of the ventricles is recorded as QRS or QRS complex. P wave was basically the depolarization process of the atria and the QRS is basically the depolarization process of the ventricles. The, the, the depolarization of the ventricles or the QRS complex is followed by the ventricular contraction. So this portion it indicates this the time interval or the, the, in the period after the QRS a complex is followed by the ventricular contraction in which the ventricles contract and after the ventricular contraction the repolarization of the ventricular process occur which is denoted with the help of T wave. 
So in the ECG or the electrocardiogram, the initial excitation of the atria or the depolarization of the atria is recorded as P wave. After the P waves, the interval between the P wave and the QRS complex is basically the contraction of the atria and in this time the contraction of the atria is occurring. After the contraction of the atria, we have depolarization of the ventricles which is recorded as the QRS complex and the QRS complex is followed by the contraction of the ventricles and after contraction of the ventricles, we have repolarization. When the electrical activity is going back, that is recorded as T wave. The repolarization process of the atria could not be recorded because at that time the machine is recording the QRS complex. So basically the ECG is the first component of the, the cardiac cycle. But when the contraction process of the atria and ventricular ventricles is occurring, we have a lot of other uh, pressure curves or volume curves uh, being recorded in the cardiac cycle. So during the contraction of the atria, the most important pressure wave is the atrial pressure wave. So atrial pressure wave has three basic important waves. First is A wave, the second is C wave, or the third is V wave. It's the A wave here, the, uh, then we have the, uh, it's the A wave, sorry, it's the A wave over here, the C wave over here, and the V wave over here. A wave, C wave, and V wave. When the atria contract, this contraction process it, uh, this generates a wave or a pressure wave in the atria which, which can be detected in the neck, in the jugular veins in the neck and this wave, this pressure wave is basically the, called the A wave. So this A wave is basically followed after the P wave because P wave is the excitation or the electrical activity it is followed by the contraction so during the contraction the pressure wave is generated and that pressure wave is known as the A wave. Once the A wave is finished the contraction of the ventricle starts. As soon as the contraction of the ventricle starts the valves between the atria and the ventricles which were open during the contraction of the atria they get closed. So we have valves which we have discussed in the last lecture, the atrioventricular valves and the aortic and pulmonary valves. These valves uh, follow the, uh, allow the blood in one way. The atrioventricular valve, they allow the blood to go from the atria into the ventricle, but they do not allow the blood to go from the ventricles into the atria. Similarly, the aortic and the pulmonary artery valves, they allow to, the blood to go from the pulmonary right ventricle and left ventricle into the pulmonary artery and aorta but they do not allow the blood to come back from the pulmonary artery or the aorta back into the ventricles. So when the contraction of the atria has occurred blood has gone into the ventricles. The ventricles when contract these these valves slightly bulge into the atria slightly bulge into the atria and that bulging into the atria cause another pressure curve into the atria that is recorded as C wave. So A wave in the atrial pressure curve is basically due to the pressure, the contraction process of the atria and C wave is basically due to the bulging of the valves into the atria. Once the bulging has occurred and the contraction in the ventricles has started, the blood basically goes out into the pulmonary artery and the aorta and the pressure in the ventricles decrease. When the pressure decrease, the the, atrio, the pulmonary artery valve and the aortic valve they close and the atrio, atrio, um, atrio ventricular the AV valves they open. When they open blood starts coming back directly into the ventricles. When the, when the uh, blood comes starts coming into the ventricle and at the same time a lot of blood is directly coming into the atria so just before the opening just before the opening of these valve 
when the wells were closed and blood was being blood was being collected into the atria that collection and that rapid uh, uh, that rapid filling of the atria that caused another wave due to the entry of the blood from the veins directly into the atria that caused another wave that is known as the v wave so the a wave is the due to contraction of the atria the c wave which is also a pressure wave in the atrial pressure curve it is due to bulging of the valves into the atria because the ventricles are contracting and the v wave is be just before just before the opening of the atrioventricular valves when blood is being uh, coming into uh, being filled into the atria and due to the pressure another pressure wave is being recorded that is the v wave so we have discussed two components of the cardiac cycle first is ecg ecg is having p wave the excitation of the atria the qrs complex the deep excitation or the depolarization of the ventricles and then we have the t wave which is the repolarization or the going back of the electrical activity from the ventricles at the same time when the atria contracted uh, the first pressure wave that was generated was that of a wave after the uh, contraction of the uh, atria blood goes into the ventricles when ventricles contract the av valve close and the closed valve slightly bulge into the atria that cause the c wave and just before the opening of the av valves when blood has filled the atria and more blood is coming that pressure wave is known as the v wave now during this process we have another uh, wave that is the ventricular volume wave the ventricular volume wave basically record the amount of blood in the ventricles at the start of the uh, cardiac cycle or at the uh, at the start of cardiac cycle when p wave has occurred and the contraction of atria has occurred as soon as atria as soon as the atria contract the blood some amount of blood was already present in the ventricles due to opening of the atrioventricular wave under pressure but the contraction process of the atria cause increase in the volume of blood that increase is recorded like this so the the graph has increased once the ventricle has been filled with the blood pressure starts generating in the ventricles because ventricle starts contracting at this time the amount of volume in the ventricles remains the same although ventricular pressure at this time is increasing but the amount of vol volume in the ventricles remain the same when the contraction of the ventricle has started blood started going into the pulmonary artery and aorta and the volume in the ventricles the amount of volume in the ventricles it starts decreasing when it starts decreasing it has reached this point at this point the the ventricle starts relaxing the ventricle starts relaxing the blood has gone into the pulmonary artery and the aorta but the av valves are still closed and the the aortic and pulmonary artery valves are still closed so no amount of blood is coming so the pressure in the ventricles is decreasing but the volume remains the same after this time the at the pressure in the atria has generated so much it has increased so much that it starts it starts um, the blood starts coming back into the ventricles and the volume of the blood in the ventricles increase so from this point we come here again and we see the volume of blood into the ventricles starts increasing starts increasing and start increasing these are basically uh, three steps there are three steps in which the amount of blood in the ventricles increases the first is the first one third one third one third and one third the initial one third is basically the as soon as the valves open the blood that was already present here it starts suddenly coming into the ventricles that forms the initial one third and that is known as the rapid filling process it starts the rapid filling process and at this point the av valves have just open so as soon as the av valves they open 
a rapid filling comes and the pressure in the ventricle the amount the volume of blood in the ventricle starts increasing after this time the blood that comes directly from the veins into the atria and into the ventricles without uh, without being collected into the atria they directly fill the ventricles come from the veins through the atria into the ventricles that forms the diastasis process or the second one third so the second one third is the diastasis the initial one third was the rapid inflow the second was the diastasis and finally in the third portion or the final one third the atria contract so the small amount of blood that was contract collected in the atria it also it is pumped into the ventricles and the volume of blood in the ventricles increase more so initially rapid blood flow due to the opening aid of the atrioventricular valves then blood that comes directly through the veins through the atria into the ventricles and this form the diastole and finally the atrial contraction occurs and the small amount of blood that was present in the atria it also comes into the ventricles and the volume steadily increase from this level to this level at this point the atrioventricular valve they close at this point the atrioventricular valves close here the on ecg we see the qrs complex so the qrs complex matlab means the excitation of the ventricles has occurred excitation of the ventricles has occurred and it is followed by the contraction of the ventricles so the pressure in the ventricles has started increasing the ventricular pressure the ventricular pressure in the red curve it has started increasing but the volume remains the same it means this is known as the isovolumetric isovolumetric contraction this is known as the isovolumetric contraction because the amount of blood in the ventricle is the same the atrioventricular valves are also closed and the pulmonary artery and the aortic valves are also closed so the blood is the same but the pressure is increasing the pressure is increasing but the amount of blood is the same after some times the the pressure has increased so much that the aortic valve the aortic valve and the pulmonary artery valves open so when the pressure has increased from this point to this point we see the pressure here was 20 and here it has reached 120 so somewhere around 80 90 the aortic valves has opened and the pulmonary artery valves has opened so the pressure starts become steady and the the valves open so the blood goes into the pulmonary artery and the aorta and the pressure after that time after that time the pressure in the ventricular uh, ventricular walls it starts decreasing so initially there was contraction the volume of the initially the contraction was occurring the pressure was increasing in the ventricles but the volume of the ventricle the amount of volume on the, uh, the amount of blood in the ventricle was the same then the aortic and pulmonary artery valves open so the blood has started going into the pulmonary artery and the aorta and the volume of blood in the ventricle starts decreasing so the volume of blood in the ventricle starts decreasing when it reaches this point this point here the aortic valves and the pulmonary artery valves they close so they uh, close then the pressure in the ventricles is decreasing but as soon as both the aortic and pulmonary and the atrioventricular valves are closed so the amount of volume the amount of blood in the ventricles remains the same but the pressure starts decreasing in the ventricle this is known as the isovolumetric relaxation isovolumetric relaxation here it was isovolumetric contraction here it's also volumetric relaxation the volume of blood remains the same but the pressure uh, the pressure in the ventricles is or the um, the amount of tension in the walls of the ventricle is decreasing 
and when it has decreased so much that the atrioventricular valves, the amount of pressure in atria increase as compared to the ventricles, the AV valves once again open, the blood starts coming again into the ventricles and the volume of blood go, starts going again. So here we have discussed uh, the ventricular volume curve and the ventricular pressure curves. The, when the amount of uh, blood is increasing in the ventricles, the pressure curve is increasing. When the pressure is increasing but the volume remains the same, we have isovolumetric contraction and isovolumetric relaxation. When the blood is going out, the curve is going down. When the pressure in the ventricles, the ventricular pressure, it was increasing but no blood was going out, it was being recorded as isovolumetric contraction. And when the blood was going out, this, this portion is known as ejection. Ejection. Here the blood is going out of the ventricles. When the blood has gone out of the ventricles, the pressure starts decreasing but the, no, no new blood or no blood is coming into the, uh, no fresh blood is coming into the ventricles. So the volume remains the same but pressure decreases. So this is recorded as isovolumetric relaxation. At the same time when the ventricles is contracting, we have another curve known as the aortic pressure curve. The aortic pressure curve. Similarly, we could have the pulmonary artery pressure curve but that is not being mentioned here. We are basically focusing on one ventricle that is the left ventricle and the left ventricle is con connected with the iota. So at the start of the ventricular contraction, when the ventricular pressure was increasing, at this point the aortic valve open. This valve open, when the pressure here it increases, this valve open. Now when this valve has opened due to the contraction process, the pressure in the ventricles, the iota, the pressure in the iota has also started increasing. Now the blood is going into the iota and ejection is occurring. When the blood has gone into the iota, the, the, the pressure in the iota has increased to about 120 mm of mercury. Once the ejection of the blood from the ventricle into the iota has stopped, the pressure in the iota also starts decreasing. Initially, the pressure was increasing, but the aortic valve was closed. From this point till this point, the pressure in the ventricle was increasing, but the aortic valve was closed. Here, the aortic valve opened, so the amount of pressure in the iota also starts increasing. When the blood has ejected from the iota, the pressure in the iota also starts decreasing. And it, at this point, at this point, when the blood starts to coming back into the ventricle, there is a slight decrease in pressure, a slight decrease in pressure, which is recorded as incisura, incisura. The pressure in the ventricles was increasing. It has increased so much that the wells open here. The pressure in the aorta goes till 120 mm of mercury. Then the blood has ejected. When the blood has ejected, the pressure in the iota starts decreasing. As soon as the ventricular contraction stops, there is a slight backflow of blood into the ventricles. This is recorded as incisura, incisura. And it is rapidly followed by the closing of the aortic valve and then the pressure is the contraction of the ventricle has decreased the pressure in the iota also starts decreasing 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 till it has reached the 80 level 80 mm of mercury so the ventricular pressure curve is simultaneously followed by the aortic pressure curve when the ventricle uh, ventricular pressure has increased at a certain level it opens the valve blood is ejected into the ventricles and when blood goes into the uh, blood is ejected into the aorta and pulmonary artery and the pressure in the pulmonary artery increases initially when the contraction has stopped the pressure in uh, the blood has ejected the pressure in the aorta also starts decreasing initially there is a rapid decrease because the av valves are open but as soon as the slight amount of blood come back into the ventricle this is recorded as incisura it is followed by rapid closure of the aortic valve 
and then the blood the pressure in the aorta starts decreasing steadily so that's all about the cardiac cycle it's slightly complex but we have discussed the individual steps in separate lectures in the past few leg uh, videos and uh, it it has it has the ecg it has the ventricular volume uh, volume curve it has the arterial pressure curve it has the ventricular pressure curve it has the aortic pressure curve finally we have the phonocardiogram which is basically the recording of the heart sound when the atrioventricular pressure uh, valves they close due to the contraction of the ventricles when they close this closure of the valves is recorded as the first heart sound on the phonocardiogram and when the blood is coming back into the uh, ventricle and the from the aorta into the left ventricle and from the pulmonary artery into uh, from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle and from the aorta into the left ventricle after the contraction is over it is it is uh, rapidly followed by the closure of the pulmonary artery valve and the aortic uh, closure of the aortic valve and that is recorded as the second heart sound so that's all about the cardiac cycle and hope you have understood this uh, lecture thanks a lot for watching the video